<laughs> see, see, but even when I I went uh, I was in Vegas. See, now in Vegas you start flying, and you start flying to uh, you start uh, ear to ear combat. That's where you start the training, and then from there, you go to other places. But that's only a, a two-man aircraft that you you go in and you start to operate <laughs> turrets and <laughs> guns. <laughs> that's about one month training, and then you go to other fields from there hey. but that's uh, but they uh, but they still try to uh, Chinoo still was trying to get me back the only thing is that when you get an order from uh, in those days when you got an order from the uh, war department Nobody's supersede that. The War Department is supersedes any other order. See, that was one good thing. Nobody can change those orders unless you want to. See, that's. <laughs> So they couldn't break their order. <laughs> That's funny. But they were trying to get me back. Oh, they tried. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> but see, because you're you're young, you don't know any better. <laughs> but still, still I know. I still. Wouldn't take a million dollar for that experience, you know. Uh, it, it's um, it's some that uh, I don't know. I could have stayed. I could have stayed uh, in the state. But it wouldn't have been the same. When he had that experience, I met I met a lot of people, a lot of Chinese, a lot of Japanese, a lot of you know. Uh, I met a lot of German prison, a lot of Italian prison. I talked to. Them. It was a lot of different. If I would have stayed home, I wouldn't have had, had that experience. I met a lot of natives, you know. So, if you. That's true that I. It's only me out of ten, ten of us. It's only me and uh, Hickey was the only two that came out alive. The others are all gone. But see, the problem, the problem is a lot of, it's not a all combat that people die in combat. That is an, a lot of them. We lost more crews in training than we did in combat. Carelessness. That's what it is. And a lot of them because they don't know their job. They don't want to do their job. See, this is one one of the problems. People fluff off. 
See? Instead of, there's one, where is it? I, I ran across one that this guy said exactly, exactly what I said, uh, what, uh, what happened. In combat, you don't, you don't know, you do your job automatically. You get shot at. You don't even know. You just keep on doing your job. And uh, and you know what? After a while, say say fifteen minutes later, after you away from your target, after you away from the danger, then you start thinking, and that's when you start. <laughs> think. And you know, there's a there's one fellow. Where the hell was? I saw it in, I don't know if it was in this. He said the same thing. This fellow, I'm not sure where it was in this paper or in one of the others. The guy said he, he was, he was been shot at and he didn't even think about it. And that's true. You you don't know you don't think about it until after. But while you're in, uh, over uh, the enemy, you do your job. You concentrate. You let it, nothing bothers you. You don't even think about danger. You just do your job. But a lot of the guys, I I used to be rough on my guys. I used, I, and you know, a lot of the crews, a lot of the guys, from the other crews, they want to be on my crew. A lot of guys say, Lou, I want to be on your crew. Because we were always on the front. Always. We always got back. We might have an engine shut off. Might have a tail shut off. Always got back. See? Because I always told the guys, this guy, he was, this guy, they want, the crew want to kick him off. He was, he was a goofy. He was a bombardier, a uh, bomber. Uh, he was a uh, armor. He was responsible to see that the ammunition was there see that the bombs were loaded that was his job 